My name is Richard Billups. I'm the laboratory director for air allergen and mold testing. Welcome. Two major types of sampling that we do here for uh, fungal spores, which are thought to be an important indicator of indoor air quality. One is called spore traps. Uh, with the spore trap, a measured amount of air is brought through an, uh, a cassette that is sealed and that is delivered to the laboratory. We prep it here and then uh, we put it onto the scope and uh, we, we do what they call read or analyze the sample. What we're looking for are um, debris, we're looking for fungal spores, pollen spores, uh, we enumerate those, identify those. And based upon what we find, we can make uh, quite often a judgment as to what is occurring in the indoor air that may be causing some irritation for a person that has respiratory distress, especially the particles. Respiratory complaints in the lab that are coming from a home, a business, or a school. Quite often, when we're analyzing our slides, we'll find that there are large numbers of two what are called genera or genus of fungi, one Aspergillus, the other Penicillium. There's about 400 species between those two genus, and many of them that we find in the indoor air contain toxins. They're called mycotoxins. And when breathed in for a long enough period of time, there is a possibility of respiratory distress. We're also focused a good deal on carpet dust analysis. The reason that we find that carpet dust is so important in terms of analyzing what your indoor air uh, quality is, is that we get different kinds of information from the carpet dust. From the air sample, we'll get the type of spores, both what they call viable and non-viable, and the quantity of each type. But we can only identify it to the genus level. When we do the carpet dust sample, we can culture that. And while we can only identify the viable spores, we can identify those to the species level. Different species have different health characteristics, have different influence on your family's health, especially if you have children. And uh, for that reason, putting the two of them together gets a much better profile with respect to the mold spores. The air samples, we can also get background particulate and skin fragments. Background particulate has been declared as an, uh, a carcinogen by the World Health Organization, and they have confirmed the fact that indoor air particulate on a global basis is generally higher than what it is in the outdoor air. So by focusing on the count of the background particulate, we can give people an indication of how well their filtration is working or if they have other problems that are going, in, in the, um, going on in the home. Conversely, in the carpet dust, we can find things like yeast and rhizopus that can affect the immune system, but they won't show up in the air sample. The air sample can give us a snapshot in time, and the carpet dust can give us a history of intermittent events. So by putting the two of them together, we get a much clearer picture of what's going on in your indoor air quality than by taking either one of them independently. And one of the real benefits of air allergen, as opposed to some of the other inspectors, is that we do focus on both of these uh, methods for sampling the um, indoor air quality.